Harvest Radar Review, Part 2. My name is Daniel Vallis, and welcome to our channel. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day and the day utter speech, and night and the night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The Bible tells us there is a line in the heaven, known as the ecliptic line, and the actions and the choreography along that line with the planets and the moon and the sun, that tells a story. It demonstrates knowledge. It demonstrates an intelligence. And there is a speech in the story as it goes along and demonstrates a choreography at different portions and constellations along the line. With one of the main actors being the sun associated with the bridegroom. And so as you see the choreography of the sun in the bridegroom role going along in context of choreography of the other moon and planets such as Jupiter, that tells a story. It tells a speech. It shows a handiwork. And this is the exact same declarations that the wise men were looking at. They saw the star. They saw the star of Bethlehem at Leo the lion. Associated in promises of the scepter star. The one who would spring out of Judah. And then they traced it and they watched it. And they followed it until it came to Virgo. When Jupiter was in the arms of Virgo. And that's what filled them with exceeding great joy. Because they knew they were seeing a real time sign. The celestial clock was showing the king in the arms of his mother. They were about to literally meet the king in the arms of his mother it was so beautiful and that's what filled him with exceeding great joy because the heavens declared a real time sign when jesus christ came the first time and we are now looking and expecting to see him the second time and especially in context of the star bethlehem signs that we saw in 2015 rehearsing the whole story and then going into revelation 12 sign the sign of the son of man all that now bringing us to the expectation the promises on the last page of the bible behold i come quickly surely i come quickly and so just like the wise men we can be filled with exceeding great joy as we see the reality and the closeness the tangibleness of the promises that are about to become reality but we should also soberly remember and review the story of the wise men because as we look at the last page of the Bible, the book of Revelation, the portrayals there, we should also look at the first page of the book of the New Testament, which is Matthew, which the very first page recounts the account of the wise men. And the more that you review the story, especially in context as we are now looking just like the wise men, we are told to look up, to lift up our heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. There's a lot of parallels that we should not miss. What happened when the wise men came to Jerusalem where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have come to worship him. Where is he? They went out looking for him. But you remember the story the scribes and the Pharisees, those who had a prophetic head knowledge, those who could point to the verse and place in scripture and say, oh yes, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. They had a head knowledge of prophecy. They had a head knowledge of the prophetic time, but that did not stir in any action to them. They did not go out to meet the king. They did not apparently care. They were more concerned that, yes, they knew all the trivia information, but they did not want to act on it. They did not want to gird up their loins. They did not want to shine bright and be found going to worship the Messiah. They didn't care about the Messiah. They cared more that they knew a head full of prophetic trivia knowledge it was just more of a curiosity to them and it's sobering when you read the prophecies when you consider that herod he took it more seriously the prophecies there in scripture he actually acted on this is happening let's do something and that is why he acted and that's why he slaughtered all those two years and under because herod actually believed the prophecy was real the scribes and pharisees didn't believe it was real they had a head full of knowledge. They could point exactly in scripture where that information was. They knew that. They even had the wise men who come and told them all about the star, the time it appeared. Nobody else in Jerusalem knew about, oh, well, there's a star. Why? Because they weren't paying attention. They weren't looking up. They weren't following the prophecies in Daniel, the promises by Jacob. They were just content to have a book knowledge. 
of watching so many YouTube videos, as it were, listening to so many speakers, to where they were experts in prophecy, in what Scripture says. But it wasn't real to them. It was not real to them at all. They couldn't be stirred in the least to even go six miles down to Bethlehem. Because the prophecies weren't real. But to Herod, he had an urgency that this is happening right now. This is happening in our world. Why? Because he saw wise men who acted on their faith. They put legs on their faith. And he knew, hey, these people are real. These people are genuine. They are acting on what they believe. They have obviously seen the celestial signs. They know what they're talking about. And from all appearances, yes, the sign did appear. And Herod also knew this ties in with what the prophet Daniel said. A lot of people don't know that it is common knowledge at the time of Herod, there was a general expectation that what Daniel had talked about, about the Messiah coming after a certain number of prophetic weeks, that it would be right around that window. That's why the Samaritan woman at the well was talking about, well, when Messiah comes, he will set everything straight. Because there was a general common knowledge that, yes, a Messiah should be coming any day now if what Daniel said is true. Herod knew the rumors about what Daniel said. So did the scribes and Pharisees. And yet, who acted on that information? Only Herod. Because Herod knew the wise men were taught as magi by Daniel, the one who wrote the prophecies. And he knew they saw something. And he knew it stirred in them genuinely enough to where they made the long journey. They came out, they saw a star, they saw something, which means the Messiah had been born. There was a baby born, and Herod knew it, even without seeing the physical Messiah. Why? Because he saw the faith of the wise men, and knew it was connected with what Daniel said. So that's why he gave his order, because he believed the prophecies of Daniel more than the scribes and Pharisees who could point in Scripture to exactly where it was listed out at. And friends, this is a parallel that we need to keep in mind as we look at the last page of the Bible, when we look at the celestial clock right now today, because the account of the wise men is on the first page of the New Testament. And it's reflecting what is on the first page of the Bible in the Old Testament, how the stars are given as signs, as seasons for days and years. That's why they're given. The very first thing is listed as they are given for signs. And so the first page of the New Testament has ones who are acting on prophecies and signs that are recorded in the Old Testament. And then the last page of the New Testament talks about the Alpha and the Omega, the Lamb of God who was the fulfillment of, on the first page of the New Testament are the prophecies recorded in the Old Testament. And the last book is also talking about the prophecies on the last page of the Old Testament in Malachi before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, too. How he is going to send an Elijah. There is so many things that we should be reviewing when we look on the celestial clock because as wise men, we need to see the reality that yes, this is unfolding in our world right now today. We can go out in the morning, we can see the morning star, which is also reminding us of the root and the offspring of David, the one who pours out the living water, the one who said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth, just like the wise men, the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. He will reward the wise and faithful servants, those that put legs on the faith, those that act on the promises, that demonstrate with their life that they are holding fast to the sayings, the prophecy of this book, the fulfillment of the prophecies that go all the way back to the first page of the Bible. There's a lot that we should be calling to mind. How are we going to be found? Are we going to be found as the wise men? Or are we going to be found as the Pharisees and scribes who just have a head full of knowledge, who have heard countless hours of Speakers talking about prophetic things, and yet it does not stir in us whatsoever. Let us take heed to ourselves. Let's examine our heart. Let's draw nigh to the Lord with a true heart, being found like the wise men, like the wise virgins, with our lights burning, knowing that the great and dreadful day of the Lord is coming, the day when he will return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Malachi 3.18, the last page of the Old Testament. We need to consider the alphas and the omegas that are brought to remembrance on the last page of the Bible as we look at the pictures that are also portrayed there too, because that should remind us of the promises and the exhortations, the warnings that are there too. Ever since 2015, when the Lord started our celestial learning journey, as wise men going out and tracking Jupiter, He has shown us these scriptures, these pages, these parallels, these ties, the portrayals, has that stirred in us? 
When we look on the celestial clock over these years of the celestial journey, right now we are in May of 2023, right here at a time when Israel is reaching 75 years. As a nation, though, it's reaching 75 years old, which gives us a good ballpark that the generation that saw Israel replanted is actually older than 75. So right now they are reaching at the youngest, 80 years old, more so probably reaching 85 years old. So the generation that witnessed Israel's replanting, they are getting up to the upper limits right now. And so there's so much that we consider. We consider the age of Israel, yes. But Jesus was primarily referring to the generation, the people. Look at their age. They are now hitting 80 years old right now at the youngest. And so again, that is on the higher end of the 70 to 80 we're now hitting it right when we're also apparently running out of seven years, seven good years. A lot to consider. Back in 2014, 2015, that was the Blood Moon Tetrad. That really got a lot of Christians to start looking up, start looking at what's going on in prophecy, what's going on in the celestial clock, how does it work, how are they for signs. And it was a great introduction to really get a lot of people start looking up. But it's also during that time when the two cows were born with number seven on their head, back in September of 2014. And they recalled Pharaoh's dreams about the seven good cows and the bad cows. And so different channels were pointing and talking about it at that time, that it's very unusual. And in context of the celestial signs, which also brought a lot to remembrance too, with Joel's warning and just a refreshing of prophecy to a lot of people for the first time, for many people. And so in context, it was hard to miss the parallels that, yes, that seems to be pointing to the same context. They understand that we are approaching the end of the last generation. Because when they were born, Israel was 66. And at that time, the youngest of the last generation would have been 71, which is close to the beginning of the average generation, 70 to 80. So we're seeing it covering from about 70 to 80 right here, right now. But the book of Jasher also tells us that the seven good years started within Joseph's second year. So they didn't start counting right away. So we looked at this recently and we wondered if, would you count seven years from, say, the vernal equinox? Because that's just an astronomical marker that's typically seen as the turn of the year. So we considered that, but I also knew it wouldn't fully encompass the grain harvest. The whole seven cows, good cows, it dealt with famine and the need that there would be good years of corn harvest, the grain harvest. And so to properly cover that, to count seven good harvests, you'd have to adjust a little bit. So I just adjusted that the other day and looked at it, counting the actual harvests, which would end around Pentecost. Usually they're wrapping up the wheat harvest by Pentecost, and then you'd still have some threshing and windowing after that. But the harvest itself is pretty much done by Pentecost usually. So by the end of May, and so if we just look at the actual harvest in the agricultural world, on the agricultural clock, when do these actual harvests happen? If we're looking at seven good corn crops, when do they happen? Now, this is when they would happen. You'd have one year, which would start within the second year from when the seven cows were born. So you start looking at that crop, and then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh crop. We are now coming to the end of the seventh good crop of the good years. On the agricultural clock that is in the real world, which is also ending seven good years right at an average for the nation, but also the high average, 80, for the living generation, for the biological clock. And it was all within this window, remember, from 2015 to where we are now, the peace and safety messages started going out in late 2015, especially in 2022, when we when they reached a high level with the UN Security Council and threats of World War III going out constantly, we can see so many clocks are synchronized. An agricultural clock, a biological clock, the children of darkness, what they're doing, what we were told we should be listening for, their corona messaging. It's also breaching that they know what time it is too. They are aware of a crowning and working toward that too which again raises suspicions where we are now approaching another coordination, corona messaging that they're putting out now, right in context while they're running another script in Ukraine with the sunflower and with the sunflower fields on the flag too. They are fully aware what time it is. And of course, we've been looking at the celestial signs since 2015 with the Star Bethlehem signs. A lot of people started looking up at the blood moons and then that's when we really saw the Star Bethlehem sign. Wow! in context and reminded us when Christ came the first time. 
and the wise men. And just like the first time watching Jupiter, we've been following and tracking how it's going through and rehearsed the story with the Revelation 12 sign, the sign of the Son of Man, the promises that one day he's going to come back. And after he sat down at the throne of God, he's expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. When the Lamb of God is going to open the seals and open the tribulation judgments. That is the very next prophetic chapter. And so the heavens even rehearse this and part of the Joel warning. We saw the sun turn to darkness and the moon turn to blood in a combo two weeks apart, which hadn't happened with that messaging, particularly right at the celestial constellation of Ophiuchus right over Scorpius, acting out and even portraying in real time on the celestial clock the one treading on and making his enemies his footstool. There is so much that has filled us with exceeding great joy, but has also sobered us that we are running out of time. Sudden destruction is coming. The great and terrible day of the Lord is coming. We have increasing warnings that that day is coming. We are running out of time. We also know we're after 400 years of the pilgrim parallel, which Jesus Christ said there would be a nation that would bring forth fruit toward God, and it would be the children of Abraham through faith, Gentiles. And so we're in the 401st year, and it doesn't really have an abrupt ending because when the captain of the Mayflower died, it just sat until they finished out his affairs. So it kind of faded off into a distance. So we're still, I still see it as we're in the 401st year. After 400 years, that has been completed, which brings us again to an ending right now. After 400 years was the Exodus, which brings up all these subjects again with the seven cows. Because Abraham was told to look up at the stars. That's how his seed would be, innumerable physically and also through faith. And that led to his offspring with Isaac and Jacob, which led to Joseph. And Joseph went into Egypt and was followed with the seven cows because of the famine. Jacob and the children of Israel moved to Egypt. And that led to the events of Exodus. And going forward in time has brought us to the replanting of Israel again, starting a biological clock that we're told to look for because there is going to be escape before the sun destruction, the great and terrible day of the Lord come. There is going to be another exodus, but it's going to be through the celestial sea. The celestial sea, and especially since the replanting of Israel, we've been told to look up. And then with those events, with the blood moon and celestial events such as the star of Bethlehem, we've really looked up and we've paid particular attention to what is the heavens declaring. It's declaring that we need to look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And the heavens have declared since 2015 the exact story of our redemption what is the next prophetic chapter what he's going to do how he's going to release judgments against his adversary but also recounted and rehearsed for us the tapestry of our redemption how he was the atonement sacrifice he is the one who pours out the living water he is the mediator he pours out the living water for the fish the lamb of god and all this is bringing us right here to this very important time all coming together on all these multiple synchronized clocks that we need to be looking up but we also need to be watching. We need to be praying always. We need to be going forward, putting legs on our faith just like the wise men. Let's have a real, genuine faith, not a dead faith. So as we look at the last page in the New Testament, we also look at the first page in the New Testament, Matthew, and we consider the portrayals that are on the last page. We should be found as the wise men who are on the first page, the Alpha and the Omega, as we're reminded of that same concept on the last page of the Bible too. Are we going to be found like the wise men? Are we going to be found like the wise men who are aware of the story that is declared on the celestial clock? Are we going to be found as the wise men who actually rise up and do something when we know what the heavens are declaring? Do we know? Have we been listening? Do we have an ear to hear to the message, to the words, to the speech? And that should also synchronize with the Holy Spirit, with the Comforter, who will remind us of everything that Jesus Christ said, his instructions, as we look up and lift up our heads, for our redemption himself draweth nigh, the two will go together. Are we going to be found like the wise men? Or are we going to be found like the Pharisees? And so this is important as we review and reflect on what has the celestial clock been showing. Are we aware of the words? Are we aware of the speech? And once we know that, have we acted on it? And so that's why we're rehearsing this now, because the subject will come up. If the heavens have been declaring a message, a story, a speech, demonstrating knowledge, then when Jesus Christ returns, he will be bringing up the subject again. If I told you all this would happen, the heavens have been declaring it for the past several years. Why weren't you like the wise men? 
when this is so clearly spelled out on the last page of the Bible. And friend, that's why we're reviewing this. Because we will have to give account for everything that the Lord shows us. And so when he has actually brought us by the hand and spoon-fed us with these videos and given us abundant wisdom to show us what's on the celestial clock, he will bring up the subject again. And he's going to say whether we are like the wise men or whether we are like the scribes and Pharisees. The ones who did absolutely nothing and did not care that the Messiah had come. Did not care to worship the Messiah. Nothing that they knew about prophecy, even though they had a head full of knowledge, it did nothing with their relationship with God. It did not stir them. It did not move them. They were dead. They were dead. The wise men, they acted on what they saw. They acted on what they knew. Even though they didn't know as much as the scribes and Pharisees, they knew enough. They should get up. They should seek out the Messiah. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have come to worship him. And friend, is that why we are looking up? Is that why we watch all these videos? Is that why we go out into the fields and look up at the celestial clock? Is it so that we could worship our Messiah, our Redeemer, our Beloved with our life? Or is it so we can just sit back on the couch and do nothing? Content and happy with a warm, fuzzy feeling that we have a head full of knowledge, of trivia information. Why are you on this celestial learning journey? Friend, it's very important as you answer that question because one day our Messiah will ask you the same question. What did you do with everything that I showed you about my coming and my expectations for my servants when I returned? The heavens declare the glory of God. And if our life is not in reflection, being stirred to action to bring glory to our Lord, to our Redeemer, to the one who offers the living water, then we are completely tone deaf. And our heart is stone cold. Friends, with much information, much wisdom that the Lord has shown us is also great accountability. And so as you look up at the celestial clock, as you go outside and look at the heavens, the morning star, Pisces, Aries, the Lamb of God, as you look at the seven stars, as you look at all this, ask yourself, is your heart hearing it? Or is only your head hearing it? Have your hands heard it? Have your feet heard it? Have your lips heard it? Has your life heard what the heavens declare? There is a year ago, remember when Jupiter was at the stream of water that is poured out by Aquarius, when the sun was also at Aquarius. The same place when the calls of peace and safety went out. Right when the sun as a bridegroom is pointing at Aquarius, our bridegroom is the one who pours out the living water. Right on the celestial clock, right when Jupiter, the king of righteousness planet, was pointing right at the stream of living water that our Redeemer pours out. That's when the enemy put out the calls of peace and safety, which scripture tells us when you hear that you know time is running out. We could look at the celestial clock ringing out our perspective of it. Not a perspective from the children of darkness's view, but looking at it as our Redeemer's view. We are running out of time to offer the living water. And we will only know that when we know what our job is as the fishers of men. Fishers of men in the fields of harvest that are white in the harvest. We are the ones running out of time. You also remember it's November 21, that's when the Joel warning went out, with the sun being turned to darkness, the moon being turned into blood, right at the tail of Capricornus, right at the side of Aquarius, right at the start, about to trace toward the left, pointing out the picture of Aquarius, about to go through that story. Right when the heavens were declaring the sign that would be seen before the day, there was a sign in the heavens pointing even to this portion, reminding us that day is coming. Are you living as though that day is coming? Are you being found with your loins girded in service, knowing you should be out in the fields of harvest? You should be doing your job as a fisher's men? The signs on the celestial clock are ringing out for us what our job is. And then the calls of peace and safety went out, right? Also pointing to that. All while these signs are going out, the first page of the Bible tells us the celestial lights are for signs. And so when we see the signs that we are foretold, we should also see the story that is going on at that exact same place. That's like the wise men. They saw the story. And when we see the warnings about the tribulation that is approaching, don't just get caught up in, oh, the tribulation is coming. Look 
beyond that. Look at the story. What is in the area on the celestial clock that's ringing out? It's really Aquarius. It's time to start pouring out the living water like never before. So much the more as you see the day approaching. As you see you're running out of time because you see on the celestial clock the signs that tell you that day is approaching. The great and terrible day the Lord is approaching. That celestial sign took place right in the story reminding us what our job was. Have we been tending to our job since then? Or have we neglected our job since then? In just a few weeks, the end of May, the beginning of June, Jupiter is going to be at the head of Aries, the Lamb of God, which soberly reminds us it's the Lamb of God that opens the scroll that starts the tribulation. All those events of the great and terrible day of the Lord. We see this apparently marked out very clearly, straight and delineated, a progression of knowing the day is approaching when it's about to go into effect. And all during that time, Jupiter has been tracing. The star that we've been seeing the second time, in a sense, we've been seeing it traced out the exact portrayal that is on the last page of the Bible when Jesus Christ himself says three times, Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Do you know what you should be doing when you know that I am coming quickly? And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come and let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Friend, if you do not understand why this statement about the bride is on the last page of the Bible, right in context of the water of life that is being poured out, then you do not understand the heart of our bridegroom. You do not understand why he emphasized this in the midst of all his promises. Behold, I come quickly. You have a job to do, bride. You are fishers of men. And the spirit and the bride will both say, come. And if your heart over all these past few months, ever since 2021, particularly when it's been pointing out this exact picture portrayed on the last page of the Bible, if your heart has not echoed this with your hands, your heart, your feet, your life, if there has been no echo reverberation in your life whatsoever, you are as dead as the scribes and Pharisees. And you are not the bride. You are not the bride. Because the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And if your heart cannot say that and cannot echo the bridegroom, then you are not the bride. You may be a foolish servant, a slothful servant, a wicked servant, a neglectful servant, but you are not a loving servant. You're not a faithful servant. You're not a wise servant. Those that draw nigh to the Beloved that sup with him will know his heart. And those that draw nigh to the Beloved will echo his heart because his desires become their desires. And they will readily echo what the Beloved echoes. And friends, this is a heart check that we need to have as we look at what the heavens declared ever since 2021. It's been this message. Has our heart echoed it at all? Or have we tried to quench this every time our heart tried to echo it? Every time the Spirit stirred in us to try to echo this over these past few months, have we tried to quench it? Have we quenched the Spirit every time it tried to echo the heart of our bridegroom? Friend, this is what we need to take assessment of. This is what we need to take stock of. What has our heart been saying over these past few months? Because our bridegroom hears it loud and clear. The one we call our beloved, the Lamb of God, he hears it loud and clear. And he can hear if our heart echoes his heart. He can hear if our lips and our heart echo his heart. He can also hear if there's deafening silence. Silence by our hands, by our feet, by our heart, by our lips. What has the Spirit heard us say as he has shown us what the heavens declare? We had better take stock of it because he has heard it loud and clear. We are at a time of harvest, a time of reaping, a culmination of sowing and planting and watering. A lot of reflection on all that our Father has shown us over these years. A time when the fields are white and the harvest. They are perfectly ripe for harvest. And that is what he has shown us all these past few months. And we will only be able to stand before the Son of Man if our heart has been echoing his heart. But if our heart has been silent and we've been quenching the Spirit all these past few months and 
all while the Spirit has loudly, clearly declared what the heavens declare about what's on the last page of the Bible, then, then we are not ready if we insist on silence. The Spirit and the Bride will say, Come, because the Bride has an ear to hear, an ear to hear the heart of her Beloved. And this has been the message that the Lord has placed on our heart over these past few months, over these past years even, as we've gone out on this celestial learning journey, looking up and watching Jupiter as it's traced through Aquarius. We've been watching it, but we've not been watching it indifferently or coldly. There's been the urgency to have an ear to hear. He is the one who pours out the living water. Lift up your eyes and look. Look. Not just with your head knowledge, but look with your heart on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Have we been doing this past few months, or have we been quenching the Spirit? These are hard questions. There are hard answers. But we will be asked these questions by our Beloved when He comes, and He will reward every man according as His work shall be. And He ties it directly with, Behold, I come quickly. Always keep in mind, I will reward you, whether you have an ear to hear, when I come. And the spirit and the bride will echo the bridegroom's heart. And if you do not echo my heart, you do not serve me. You are not my bride. Friend, how are we going to be found? Will we be able to stand before the Son of Man as his bride? As his loving and faithful bride? The Lord has brought us on an incredible celestial learning journey over the past few months. Over almost the past two years, we've been especially focusing on what have we seen, what have the heavens declared since the Joel warnings that went out before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. The warning is for the world, it's for the Christians, especially those who claim to be the wise men who are watching the celestial signs, watching the prophetic signs. Those who are not content with just a head full of morbid curiosity knowledge, they pay attention to the signs for action knowing that our Lord, our Savior, our King, demands His servants to be found with their loins girded, with their lights burning when He comes. And you will remember back in 2021, November 19th, we went out to the field, we looked up. We looked at the blood moon that was taking place where? Right at the seven stars. Right at Pleiades. Because the churches of God are the ones who need to be realizing that they are running out of time the most. The celestial signs are for the churches. The letters are to the churches. They're to the Christians. It's all Christian. Be zealous. Be zealous for your Lord is coming quickly. You are running out of time and he expects you to be found with your lights burning. The Joel warning was directly seen in context of the seven churches reminding us of all the context of the book of Revelation and all the events, the warnings. What is coming that we would want to Watch and pray always that we would be counted worthy to escape. And we'd only be able to escape all the things that are coming if we can be found to where we can stand before the Son of Man when he comes. And if we have been a slothful and wicked servant who hangs their head in shame because we've quenched the Spirit all these many months that he has shown us and called to us, then we cannot stand before him as we should be. Now is the time to take stock. Is there something in our life that we should fix? Is there something we should address? If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. It is better for us to ask ourselves these questions, to answer ourselves soberly, to take an honest assessment of ourselves, to take heed to ourselves, so that way we avoid the shame when our Master asks us the same questions, because the questions and the subjects will come up. It's a whole lot better for us if we ask ourselves these questions and we address them. Lord, give me wisdom. Show me what I can do. I will do whatever you want me to do. I, maybe I haven't been the servant I should have been. Maybe I've wasted and squandered so many opportunities. Maybe I've quenched the Spirit so many times. Lord, I want to have an ear to hear. I want to be found with my life burning. I want to be found going in the right direction. I want to be found drawing nigh to you. I want to be found going out to meet the bridegroom, not quenching the spirit. I want to be found ready to stand before the Son of Man. Lord, show me what I need to do, and I will rise up and do it. 
Friend, that's the heart we need to have here at this very late hour, especially knowing we have been shown so much. The calls of peace and safety went out shortly after that sign before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Multiple reminders on the celestial heavens and the geopolitical realm reminding us we are running out of time. The very warnings which is in the last page of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, that Elijah was going to come and give these warnings before that day come. And it was just a few weeks ago we saw the one year anniversary of the peace and safety calls. And as you look at the timeline, as you review these links, review what we should have been listening to when the calls of peace and safety went out, when the anniversary happened, where was the son as a bridegroom? It was at Aquarius when the calls of peace and safety went out, reminding us that sun destruction is coming. And that's why we look at the timeline to review what the heavens have declared. As it's also declared that we are running out of time, that day is coming. Remind us of our job. We are to facilitate the pouring out the living water. We are to be the fishers of men. What the heavens declare in context of the geopolitical warnings reminds us of what our job is. And it wasn't too long after the peace and safety warnings was the seven-year anniversary of the Star of Bethlehem celestial events, counting by 360-day years, which are prophetic years, and that was on May 23rd, 2022. And again, where was the sun? The sun was right near Pleiades, right near the seven stars. As we recall the events when we looked up and we lifted up our heads and we saw Jupiter, the king planet, and Leo, the lion, in this time on this anniversary, in this context of a blood moon at the seven stars, we also consider our bridegroom, our beloved, the one who pours out the living water, is reminding us of our journey, all that he has shown us. It's our beloved who has shown us all these celestial happenings, all these events, all that they declare he has given wisdom and insight. It's our beloved. It's also our beloved who's going to bring up this subject again. Were you like the wise men who went out to worship? Or like the scribes and Pharisees who just wanted to pass a trivia test and did not want to worship, did not care to worship? They couldn't be stirred to worship. It does us good to review these anniversaries, to look at the celestial clock when these warnings go out, because we should be reminded of the words, the story, the speech, the knowledge, all that we should have been listening to and having an ear to hear. Because whether we put legs on our faith and go out like the wise men, that's going to demonstrate whether we can hear or whether we would rather not hear. And if we'd rather quench the spirit, Friends, now is the time when we need to assess how long have I been listening, how long have I been having an ear to hear, or how long have I been quenching the Spirit. Because this has been a long learning journey. Our Father has shown us so much. Some of you are newer on this path with us than others, but you all know the Lord has shown us so much. And He has seen and observed what our heart has said, what our heart has echoed all during this time. And it sobers me as I consider this harvest time we're at now, which apparently is the end of the seventh harvest. They were also reaching the eighth year anniversary of the Star Bethlehem Celestial Events, going by 360 day years. And that will be May 18th, 2023, the exact same day as the Day of Ascension. And while I do not know the day or hour, I do know that our Lord has shown us so much on this learning journey that is leading to a culmination particularly which seems to be exemplified by the portrayals on the last page of the Bible. And here at this time, as that portrayal is coming to an end, we also see eight-year anniversary reminding us he has called us to look up and lift up our heads. We've had eight years. Eight years. What has our heart said over these eight years? What have our hands said? What have our feet said? What has our life said all during these eight years? Right here as we're approaching the end of a harvest, apparently maybe the seven good years about to start the seven bad years when the lamb is about to open the scroll there's a lot that should sober us when we look at the celestial clock because it's telling a story a story we should have been listening to the wise men listened to the story they did not just watch the story they listened to the story have we listened to the story has it reverberated in our hearts? The story that we've seen since the Joel warning when the blood moon is right at Pleiades, the seven stars right by the side of Aquarius with Jupiter. And since that very moment, Jupiter is traced down through the one who pours out the living water. 
Aquarius, our beloved, our high priest, our mediator, is chased down through the second fish, chased down through the first fish where we find ourselves now and is about to reach the Lamb of God, the one who is waiting henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. When the great and terrible day of the Lord starts, the sudden destruction starts, when time runs out, have we taken advantage of the good years of harvest? The good years of harvest. When we had so much opportunity shown to us. It is very sobering to consider that when the blood moon happened at Pleiades, the seven stars with the Joel warning, that was 17 and a half months ago. 17 and a half months for the bride to echo the bridegroom. For the seven stars to echo the bridegroom, the one who pours out the living water, an entire year and a half. What have we done with that? Did we have an ear to hear? It is sobering, especially to me as a watchman, because I can review and look back at all the videos that the Lord put on my heart and all the opportunities that he showed us since Jupiter started Aquarius to where it is now, tracing through this message. This is your job. Will you echo your bridegroom's heart? When the Lord impressed upon us in so many ways, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Use what is in the power of your hand. He has shown us, even on the very day of the blood moon, when we looked up by the seven stars of Pleiades, very next morning, the field was covered with frost, the white fields. All these opportunities he has shown us this entire time have we quenched the spirit all. For seventeen and a half months. All the time that he impressed upon us. Launch out into the deep. And let down your nets. For it you have to fish. Don't harden your heart. Don't quench the spirit. Use what is in the power of your hand. And launch out into the deep. The very one who showed us. What the celestial heavens were declaring. Showed us the celestial time. Showed us the jewel warnings. The very one who showed us opportunities. The fields lift up your eyes. And look, the field is right in front of you. What did our hearts say? Did our hearts say, shut up? I don't want to do that. I don't want to launch out into the deep. I don't want to let down the nets. I don't want to be part of a harvest. I don't want to go out into the fields. Or did we say, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Whatever our answer was during the seventeen and a half months, our bridegroom has heard it loud and clear. Loud and clear. And it sobers me and saddens me in so many ways to see so many opportunities that he placed literally right at our feet. Right before us on the screen, as he gave us so much wisdom and insight. As he poured out his heart, and he asked, why don't you want to echo my heart? And you remember it was in January, right at the end of when he had shown us so many various options, so many opportunities, so many easy ways to launch out in the deep. When the response was resoundingly clear, the Lord gave the wisdom, incredible wisdom, praise his name, for the video of the heavens declare symphony. For the wise men who responded to his call, who echoed his call, who launched out into the deep with what was in the power of our hand to do, the Lord gave abundant wisdom to the celestial declarations to show his beautiful tapestry of redemption, to also highlight the message that is declared on the last page of the Bible. And friend, as we soberly consider what the heavens declare, what it has declared for 17 and a half months, we must also soberly consider that the last page of our Bible tells us that our beloved is also aware what our heart declares. The heavens declare, but our heart will also declare. Our life will also declare. It will declare whether we love our beloved. The spirit and the bride say come. All this is in context of the warnings that he is coming quickly. He will reward those that keep the sayings of the prophecy of the book. He will reward every man according as his work shall be. All this in context of the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Which reminds us of the clear examples in scripture of how he expects to find us. The last page of the Old Testament. The first page of the New Testament the last page of the Bible. Whether we have an ear to hear will be shown by what the bridegroom hears. What the bridegroom hears.
That's all the time we have for today, friends, so stay tuned for part three, and until next time, Maranatha. Thank you.